developments today in a story the I-Team first brought you as pressure mounts on a charity we've been investigating for more than a month. It came to our attention from the St. Peter Petersburg Times, a Florida newspaper that found the charity across the bay in Tampa. But the group has its Ohio headquarters right here in Cincinnati. Hagee Lamore went looking there. Hagee? You may have gotten a call from the U.S. Navy Veterans Association asking for your hard-earned cash. It probably was from a telemarketer that they used to raise money, and it's worked. Almost $2 million just in Ohio, and this is a national operation. Where does all the money go? Ohio's top prosecutor tells us it's funding one man's political agenda. It doesn't take the 4th of July. I'd like to do a thank you card to the men and women in the service. To bring out the patriotic. Here, girls, come sign your name. In most Americans these days. Are you happy to do it. Which is why veteran John Gwynn cringes. It hurts us. At what the I team brought to his attention. It's heartbreaking. I mean, it's unfortunate, you know, that there would be someone out there that would be like that. We think it's disgusting. We think it's outrageous. Ohio's attorney general doesn't mince his words. How unusual is this? Uh, <laughs> unprecedented in my experience. This is a nas national fraudulent scheme uh, that operated in Ohio and elsewhere. Welcome to the website touting the U.S. Navy Veterans Association, a group that claims to be one of the oldest Navy vets groups with a CEO boasting a very naval last name, Nimitz, and chapters in 41 states representing 66,000 members. <laughs> numbers are equally astonishing when you check the group's take and donations that must report to the IRS. In 2008 alone, it claimed more than $22 million. The group registered its Ohio headquarters, as charities must do, at this street address, what looks like an office on Vine Street in Cincinnati. This is it. Is there a Navy Vets Association here? Um, our uh, privacy agreement states that we can't release information about who may or may not be a box holder here. A mail drop, same as most of the state chapters and the group's national headquarters, where a phone answers. This is the Washington, D.C. office of the United States Navy Veterans Association. But no one calls back. Perhaps because, until recently, this is where the group's founder seemed to be operating, a rundown duplex in a shabby section of Tampa, Florida. One side served as the group's office, the other as home to a man who calls himself Commander Bobby Thompson. And he's a very shadowy figure, and in fact, all that money is being funneled to him and his political causes as well. Those political causes in a minute. First, for Thompson. He lists dozens of officers, executives, volunteers, and those 66,000 members. We asked to talk to even one. Thompson's attorney said no. We searched public records and found not one. Not even the CEO, Nimitz. And neither could the state. We couldn't locate them. You couldn't locate them. Do you think they exist? We believe they do not exist. But Thompson sure does. Here he is with former President George W. Bush. Nice Christmas card. How did he get access for this photo? It might have something to do with the other group he ran from that duplex, a political action committee called NAVPAC that donated almost $100,000 to Republicans across the country. Thompson himself wrote checks for another $190,000. He was actually financing a nationwide political operation uh, through taking money from, from charitable contributions from Ohioans and others. Thompson spread some money around Ohio. He contributed to Senator George Voinovich, former Senator Mike DeWine, Cordray's opponent for Attorney General this fall, former U.S. Representative Steve Shabbat, and current Congresswoman Jean Schmidt. Of course, politicians don't track the source of every contribution, but Thompson clearly funded his political agenda. It's disturbing, it's, it's outrageous, uh, and, and it's really an obscenity on our political and governmental system. And then there was one $500 check to a woman who once held Cordray's office, former Attorney General Betty Montgomery. How familiar are you with the U.S. Navy Vets Association? Um, I know. 
know a little bit about them. But not just because of that check. Your partner represents that. Yes. Montgomery now practices law at this firm outside Columbus, its first name partner, McMurray. That's Helen McMurray, who used to serve under Montgomery at the Attorney General's office as the head of the Consumer Division, protecting the very consumers the current Attorney General says her client is cheating. Can we speak to Helen McMurray, please? She's not here. We tried for more than a month to arrange an interview with Thompson or McMurray. Again, it's not my case. It's not my client. But even her former boss... I don't disagree with anything you're saying. I think you need to talk to the person who knows about it. Could it get us an audience? I can give her a call. As for Bobby Thompson, while attorneys general across the country now are looking for him, we traced that check he wrote to Montgomery listing this address in Cincinnati. He can't be my twin. <laughs> Where we found Bobby Thompson. They looking for a white guy. Close in age, but otherwise nothing alike. If I do give my money away, I give it to a Democrat. He swears that check isn't his. Leaving one more mystery. Why this Bobby Thompson would use this one's address. I think that's pretty bad, you know. That's something like he's using the service, uh, you know. We never could find Commander Bobby Thompson, and now it seems neither can his attorneys. After more than a month pressuring Helen McMurray to defend her client, her firm now is filing to withdraw from the case. This is the motion that's going to go before the judge on Monday, and it says that McMurray's firm hasn't been able to reach Thompson since June 20th. He and possibly millions of dollars have disappeared. But the gravy train may be stopping because uh, it looks like the two telemarketing firms that the firm was working with now have dropped the charity. So no more calls to people's homes. And uh, Ohio, Florida, and several other states also have moved to shut down the operation. But what about the veterans? Is there any proof that any of that money is going to the veterans? Well, we've found thousands of dollars here and there. You know, a few thousand here, a few thousand there, but nothing like millions of dollars. And also local veterans groups that do services they say they've never heard of U.S. Navy vets and never seen them providing any services. All right. Thank you. Thank you for bringing us sure. that story.